Good morning, this is Wayne Blau with another Smart Profit Maximizing Moment. Hello in particular to the replay viewers. Uh, a lot of you are going to watch this on replay, so definitely appreciate it. Let me get rid of that. A pop-up reminder went on the screen. And another one. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't think you guys see them, but they're annoying to me on this side. Don't have the puppy today, but she is why we're late. <laughs> you know, because um, puppies are like newborns. They don't sleep well, and I ran a little late. So anyways... Um, today we're going to talk about cutting your taxes with retirement plans. Just a really exciting <laughs> topic, but it is for a lot of people. At some point, business owners reach a point where they're making enough money, they're getting older, usually in their late 40s, early 50s, and they're like, mm, I need to start putting something away for retirement, okay? Um, some realize they're building their business as their best retirement. Others still have enough profit where they want to put money in their retirement. A uh, couple of announcements before I get into this in detail. First of all, let me do a better job introducing myself. My name is Wayne Bilal. I'm a local CPA in El Paso, Texas. We focus on three things. One, we the main thing we do, and all of what's related, is is help our clients build their, their you know their dream business, their profitable business that supplies the lifestyle they were hoping for and fulfills their goals. I mean, and that's part of what this um, these videos are. Another thing that's going to happen now is I'm moving these videos sometime in the next couple days into a private Facebook Facebook group. And this is going to be a community of business owners um, that are going to, that I, my vision is that they're going to help each other um, grow their business. And I'm going to moderate it and answer questions. So this is one place where you can get answers to questions that you may have. Uh, from myself, you know, and I've been doing this for a long time. I passed the CPA exam back in the 1970s, started founder of my own CPA firm in 1991. So I've worked with thousands of business owners and, I, and we've made mistakes, we've had successes. This is where you can, you know, avoid our mistakes and duplicate, repeat our successes without having to spend a ton of money yourself. So that's important, okay? So keep an eye out for it. Right now you can find me if you just go to Wayne Belisle. I'll get, I'll shorten it so you can find it. But if you go to Facebook, look for groups and type in uh, "smart profit maximizer," you'll find me. I'll, I'll get a. I'll, if you're what, if you're listening to this page, I'll get it for you. But otherwise, that's the best way to get it. Um, the second thing we mainly do is tax planning. So in the last three years alone, we've saved our clients 4.3 million dollars in taxes. That's a lot of taxes. <laughs> okay. And that's all money that they could use for whatever purpose they had, but they didn't have to send it to the IRS. Simple as that. And we're going to talk about one of the good tax planning things that are still left. And the third thing is we help the business owners and file their personal and their business taxes. We do a lot of rental property owners, and we do a few just regular people, you know, that come in with a W-2. We don't do many of those because we're not H and R block. Between last this year, I think we're going to do over 600 to 700 returns. God, I don't count them anymore. That just makes me tired. <laughs> so anyways, like I said, keep your eye open. We're going to move this to a Facebook page. I'm going to post a couple of the ones that I think are good, um, that might be timely or whatever, in my regular page, on my blog. But most of the content is going to be inside that community, so on that Facebook group. So keep an eye out for it. If you're on the page, like I said, I'm going to send you an invite. Let's talk about cutting your taxes with a retirement plan, all right? Qualified retirement plans. Qualified retirement plans versus non-qualified plans. A qualified retirement plan allows you to have a tax deduction. It's one of the best tax deductions out there still. Plus, you're saving for retirement. Now, understand, it's a deferral. You don't pay the taxes now. You pay it when you take it out. A non-qualified plan may be better for you because you don't get a deduction now. You're funding it with after-tax dollars. But you, depending on what you're doing, if it's an annuity, you're only taxed on, on the income when it comes out, if it's a life insurance product, it could be 100% tax-free, and usually normally is, because you're borrowing, you tend to borrow your money. Uh, all of this is complicated. Very little of this should you do on your own, all right? There's really, uh, there's two major categories of retirement plans, and I talked about qualified already. Um, da -da -da -da, let me see if I missed any of the advantages. When you're an employer, having a retirement plan helps you get better employees. That's been proven, all right, and and helps retain existing employees. It encourages um, loyalty because 
you know, usually they're not vested for three to five years. That's vesting means when they quit, they get the, your contributions. They always get their contributions, but they get the contributions you've made for them. Um, usually funded retirement plans are not subject to creditor's claim. And they're, like I said, a great write-off for individuals, but they have disadvantages, all right? Many of the plans have complex, all of them, well, not all of them, truthfully, have complex, requir complex requirements in order to qualify for the tax deduction. If you want, you gotta follow their rules. Pretty simple as that, okay? Um, there's top-heavy rules. You can't just fund the owners, all right? There are rules to make sure you don't do that because it was abused in the past, it's simple as that. Some of the more complex returns require Form 5500 with the IRS. I don't even bother to do those anymore. So it's usually somebody else, an administrator or somebody like that that needs to do it. Um, some of the plans, some of the retirement plans require an annual contribution, whether you do it or not. The types of qualified retirement plans really fall into two categories, defined contributions and defined benefits. Hey, Lindsay, how you doing? Um, the, the specific benefit, the, the defined, whew, sorry about that, the defined benefit plans Think about your government plans, all right? Like uh, somebody works in the government, they work so many years, once they retire, they get 70 or 80% of their retirement for life. Um, those are much more expensive. Most business owners don't use them. The advantage of it is, is if I have a business owner who's been building their business and hasn't had the money to put it in retirement until their mid 50s, early 60s, um, all of a sudden they're on that hockey stick and they're, you know, all of a sudden they're making a ton of money and they're paying taxes. A defined contribution plan, a defined benefit, I'm sorry, a defined benefit plan, I can put up to $260,000 for the owner. You know, I've seen that and deduct it. Why? Because it's based on how long they have between their current age and when they're going to retire and how much is needed to fund that for that time period to give them 80% of their salary, let's say. And since they're usually older than their employees, the amount they have to put in for their employees is minimal. But remember what I told you before, there's top heavy plans. Most, that's very rare nowadays in private industry. It's still mainly the government model. Um, defined contribution plans, you know those more. Profit sharing plans, 401ks, stock bonus plans, SEPs, simplified employee pension plans, uh, simple IRAs, payroll deductions from IRAs, for IRAs. Now, one of the problems with this this is complicated stuff. You're not going to make this decision on your own. You have to make this decision with the help of, of, a, of professionals and not really just your CPA. You want to get a, a probably with your financial planner and make sure you understand because it, there's so many things you need to know for, and decide if there's going to be a minimum funding level. If you're going to put a defined benefit in, the expectation is, is that you're going to make contributions every year. If you don't have a business that has a flat income or an expected growth, you need to decide if that's something that works for you, all right? How much does the, the employer wish to contribute? That makes a difference. If you want to contribute 50,000, we don't have to go to those complicated levels. If you want to contribute 300,000, yeah, then we do. Who is the target group that benefits? It might not just be the owner. It depends on the owner I'm dealing with. A lot of times they have employees that help them build the business and they really do want to help them grow it, okay? What is the business, business owner's toler, tolerance for administration and setup costs? This is complicated stuff. And even if you hire help, you need to be involved in it. It's really that simple, all right? Um, another thing that comes in back in, oh, I want to say 2013, I think it was, whenever Obamacare went into play, you had that 3.8% surtax. And now, you know, so you got this year, this last year with Trump's tax, you have the cliff if you're in a service industry where if you're over a certain amount, you don't get the 20% deduction. A lot of times the retirement plan can take you down below not having to pay that Obama surtax or to qualify for the Trump tax. At the end of the day, what I just did was, for most of you, confusing. <laughs> Which is, sorry, this is the Cliff Notes version. And it's why I said from the very beginning that you need to get a professional. And, you know, I see, I'm going to give you a disclaimer that I don't normally do unless I'm doing tax stuff like this. It's really impossible for me to offer specific advice for your situation. I'm not, okay? I'm giving you the general. So please, 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 if you're going to do something like this, make sure you get with your tax professional. And I'm covering it now because you have a couple of deadlines coming up. If you're going to put a 401k in place, it needs to be set up before September 1st, October 1st. I think it's September 1st, but either way, it's moving. So if you think you're going to do a 401k this year, you need to have it in play before then, all right? 
And if you're going to do a defined benefit, you're going to put a ton of money away, it needs to be set up by the end of the year. But this takes time, all right? You, you don't want to be making last-minute decisions on this. So if you're having a really good year and you're thinking about doing a retirement plan, two things. Make an appointment with your CPA, get with your financial planner, all right? Um, tomorrow, hopefully, I'll have uh, Tessie here so she can help me. <laughs> um, I end up having to take my puppy with me a lot of times. I don't have her today because my wife is taking care of her. I have appointments. So until next time, this is Wayne Lyle saying let's make this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.